up sauce gang and welcome back to the channel hot sauce beats are with another dope fun naf reaction that is right he just dropped a brand new video fnaf the major clue we all missed now as you guys know i've been deep down this fnaf rabbit hole and of course we've been checking out matt pat over at game theory but about a month or so ago we started getting into fun naf and I am absolutely loving his theories, and I love the fact that they completely contrast against Matt Pat. So I'm getting two different perspectives. It's a lot of FNAF lore to keep in my head, and it's driving me crazy. But I'll be on hype for this. But before we jump into it, show FNAF some love by subscribing to his channel. If you enjoy my reaction, smash that subscribe button because it greatly helps. But enough talking. Let's get to reacting and roll that bomb ass intro. sauce gang hey i'm willing to bet it's not a fud naf theory unless he talks about charlie bot back in september of 2017 Some, somewhere Scott in here he's gonna talk about charlie bot about how he likes to use new fnaf games in order to clear up misconceptions from past games but in this post there was one sentence that i never noticed until recently at the very end of this paragraph he says quote currently there is a misconception from sister location that i may need to clear up someday as well or so this this little sentence right here we have heard this before i don't remember if matt pat covered it or it might have been fun F, but we have talked about this and we don't know what he was talking about like what issue got corrected or maybe i'll just leave it to torment the fan i think he just left it to torment us what? you're telling me that a whole year after sister location came out there is still something that everyone thinks is one way but is actually the other that one sentence sent me on a hunt for that it drives me crazy I, I found it don't forget to subscribe oh. and remember this is just a theory up, like bro? scott talked yes, about chat remember these are just theories. They're not proven facts. No need to get mad and crazy. I'm sorry. It's it's morning, dude. And I just, ugh, I did a lot of yard work yesterday. So I'm like, war now. I'm sleepy still. So I'm going go crazy. In the Reddit post, he usually uses say, new chat. games to clear up misconceptions from past games. Like how he used the keypad and sister location to settle the bite of 83 versus 87 debate. And now it looks like he's finally clearing up the sister location misconception with Mike's room showing up in security breach and with the sister location bunker showing up in the Help Wanted 2 trailer. Something tells me we missed something big with that game. And I believe that thing has to do with Mike's room we go back to after every shift in sister location. Specifically, the show that plays on the TV. The Immortal and the Restless is very prominently featured in the game, but no one seems to have come up with a clean answer for what it was trying to tell us. The show centers around a vampire and his wife. The husband repeatedly says that the vampire baby is not his. Clara, I tell you, the baby isn't mine. The baby Every isn't mine. Episode, he makes it clear that although the baby is also a vampire, it is not his baby. It we isn't mine. That the husband and wife is Mr. and Mrs. Afton, but who the baby is seems to still be a mystery to this day. Although Michael Afton is William's son and they both turn into undead purple people, nowhere in the games does it ever hint that Michael isn't actually William's kid. Twitter user The Logical YT recently pointed out to me that the house we see in The Immortal and the Restless is a Queen Anne style house. The same style house that Edwin bought for his wife in the story The Mimic in the newest Tales from the Pizzaplex book. A very odd connection between the show and The Mimic. In my last theory, I explained that I think The Mimic is a parallel to Henry's story. And the physical mimic that edwin builds is a parallel to baby in my i solve i already know where this is going dude i already know that it's the charlie bots <laughs> i already know he's about to start talking about charlie bots security breach series back in november i explained that i think henry rebuilt charlie then afton stole the bot and made it his <laughs> own so to rephrase my theory i still don't know how i feel about that i so okay i i do I do think there's a lot of evidence that connects Charlie bots, especially to the books, right? Like, I mean, or not, they're there in the books. And I think I can't agree that the books are parallel to the game. So maybe it's not a hundred percent like direct connection. However, if you just look at the books as like a map, like this is stuff that's going on in FNAF world this it, it's giving you a map a guide like okay this is going on in the book but just different so i don't know man i don't know how i feel about baby being 
an ex Charlie bot. Theory was that the baby isn't his. Wait. The baby isn't mine. If this sounds familiar, I've actually made this connection before. Eight months ago, I said that I think the immortal and the restless is about how the Charlie bot isn't Williams, it's Henry's. An idea that Scott introduced in the Silver Eyes trilogy that started releasing before Sister Location even and came out. And then there's the fourth closet then, book, which really is a reference the to the fourth the closet. The baby isn't mine could literally Charlie mean bot. baby isn't his. The only thing that doesn't fit cleanly is the fact that the baby is referred to as his son, not his daughter. Although you he could, could just be saying yeah, that he could just be saying that in reference. So the baby baby the baby the baby isn't mine. They argued that Charlie's death minigame in FNAF 2 was called Save Him, and the puppet is constantly referred to as a he, so pronouns have always been flipped around for Charlie. I think the show was meant to be about the general idea that baby did not originally belong to William. To see if I could find supporting evidence for this theory, I decided to look back at Sister Location. And while looking through the extras menu, I was reminded that Scott added the making of some of the animatronics. Looking through Foxy and Freddy, it seems that Scott was showing off what he had in mind initially for the designs in how I feel about that. Foxy that the had more of a light immortal pink and the restless and did too, along with not having Bon Bon or a speaker the whole time on his chest. was just him and talking I knew about just placeholder baby. colors because he fully rendered and posed them with lighting and everything before showing their final versions. This is how he imagined these characters looking initially before changing them for the final game. But I only showed you Foxy and Freddy. What did Scott initially have in mind for Baby? Well, when I scrolled through the images, I found this. Baby was originally gonna be a brunette. You know who else is a brunette? Charlie, something that Scott already established at the time in the Silver Eyes novel. Scott did not need to include this in the extras menu, but I think he did to try and nudge us in the right direction. Fast forward to today and we have the story about the mimic. That's almost scarily accurate to my theory that I had back in November in my I Solved Security Breach series. Like I said before, my theory was that Henry rebuilt Charlie, Afton stole it, and now it's an evil version of Charlie. But the way I connected this Charlie bot to Security Breach was through Mike's room. I said that the entrance of the room looks like one of the closet doors from the Silver Eyes trilogy. The Charlie bots were represented by the closet doors in those books. I also said that the wall code could connect to the Charlie bot as well, and I still believe that to be the case. To me, the wall code sounds like someone is being sent on a mission by someone who has built the breath. Since it reads, break and mend, I built the breath, and your life, your aim, will save those with soul. They are telling someone to go do something, and I believe this could be William's message to Michael before sister location. This would be the message that Michael references in his speech to his dad. I found it. It was right where you said it. I found your message. <laughs> it's right where you said it would be. Would be. They were all there. I put it back together, just like you asked me to. When you look at the wall code with that perspective, it kind of makes sense. William successfully built the breath. He figured out how to use remnants, but the things he brought to life in his experiments are now drawn to it. They need Michael's body so they can escape. If we looked like you, then we would have somewhere to go. Crawl, run, flash, shoot, crush the vile band sounds like exactly what we do in Security Breach, but if you think about it, it could also connect to what we do in Sister Location. Crawl, run, flash, shoot, crush the vile band. That's William warning okay. Michael about the fun times, okay. but he tells him to stay- I think you could- I'm, uh, That's tough, man. Yes, it does connect. That's why these theories are so tough, because it's so easy. And here's the thing that you got to remember with theories, right? It is very easy to connect something to something else when everything is so fluid and questionable and there's nothing that's concrete and- we're looking at a book that's canon, but we're only making it canon by saying it's parallel. And it's so easy to make connections when you do it that way. So he's selling me though. He's making sense of it. Because his life and his aim will save those with soul. Michael is going to save his sister whose soul resides in baby. In my previous theory the video, I talked about it. in the story, the storyteller, it's revealed that a giant white tiger head is controlling the whole pizza plex and is responsible for the animatronics acting strange. And that the tiger head is running the same program that Edwin created called Minute and I don't One. know. Back I don't in know November, I, I pointed out all of the symbolism relating to Nightmare Own throughout the pizza plex. The hidden plushies, 
the staff bots, but most notably the wires in the arcade that look just like the just puppets. Just like the arms. arms. And now I've actually made a new discovery. In the part of the game where we're what running you got? from Bandit, we pass by this giant server room. I never really thought anything of it until now. In this server room, there are once again giant wires with the same black and white stripes like we see in the arcade. And they are everywhere and connected to everything. Not to mention this room is full of Nightmare Own staff bots. Security Breach is about environmental storytelling, and Steel Wolf Studios was very clearly trying to tell us something here. I started writing this video before the new game theory came out, but it looks like MatPat agrees that a Charlie virus is in play here. Where did this Charlie virus come from? Well, if Baby really is an evil rebuilt version of Charlie, then it must have come from her. But how could this virus come from Baby if she was burned in FNAF 6? If I'm claiming that Baby slash evil Charlie bot really is back, wouldn't FNAF 6 debunk that? Well, hold on to your seats for this one. On the fifth night uh -oh. in Sister- <laughs> I love that, dude. That's where they're just like, okay. Stay with me, stay with me. You're gonna call me crazy, but stay with me. I, I got a connection. <laughs> Location, we hear a speech from Baby. Can you hear me? I'm going to be taken to the scooping room soon. She seems scared because she knows she's about to be sent to the scooper. The Charlie virus knows what's about to happen and she wants to make sure that a piece of her survives. So she does what she does best. She pretends. I'm pretending. Remember how I said I could pretend? There is something bad inside of me i want you to save what is good so the rest can be destroyed and never recovered there is a passcode that you must enter before you can retrieve me after putting in the passcode this happens a hatch should have opened take the card that you find inside now you must turn back michael does what she says he takes the chip containing the charlie virus out of baby remember baby might be a charlie bot running a charlie virus but elizabeth died inside of her they are both occupying baby now that elizabeth is all that remains in baby charlie is more than happy to have the body destroyed I want uh, okay so i i I don't know what to believe, man, but this does, it just, it makes sense, though. Because, I mean, we've already seen, you know, different, <clears throat> perfect example, Golden Freddy has multiple people inside of Golden Freddy. So I can see this, and the whole, you know, uh, they're, they're trying to say Gregory's good and bad, too, you know, and... God, dude, that's just making so many different characters good and bad, though. So we have the evil Charlie by and Elizabeth inside a baby. So this is another character that's good and bad. Gregory's good and bad. I don't ah I don't know, bro. I'm to destroy this body. This is the one thing that Vanessa Henry did was not good account and bad. for when he did the FNAF 6 fire. He didn't know that Michael took the Mimic slash Charlie virus out of baby. Henry thought he burned everything in that fire, but that evil Charlie virus lived on in that chip. So baby that makes sense though, dude. That makes sense of how it survived the fire was that we took the chip. Obviously we were tricked. We were tricked. It was not Elizabeth we were talking to. It was the evil Charlie. Okay. And then we took the virus, and that's how everything survived. It really tells us by grabbing that chip, we are retrieving her. There is a passcode that you must enter before you can retrieve me. The baby that was talking to us throughout Sister Location was always the evil Charlie virus in that chip. In Sister Location, baby never talks to us as if she is Elizabeth. Isn't this why you came here? To be with her again? I still hear her sometimes. Her, she talks about her, her as if she's a her. separate person. But in FNAF 6, the Charlie virus is out of baby, and now she's talking as if she is Elizabeth. I will make you proud, Daddy. That chip was ground zero for that Charlie virus Bruh. that ended up running the entire pizza place. Okay, but I if see Michael you really got now. spooked at the end I of see you. location, how did that virus end up in the hands of Fazbear Entertainment? Well, in the story The Mimic, Edwin leaves the Mimic behind, something Baby alludes to. What is bad? is always left behind. Months later, Fazbear Entertainment sent workers to go collect the Mimic from Dad. Edwin's abandoned warehouse. Just like the two workers who were sent to the sister location bunker on night four. Uh-oh, it sounds like someone else is in the building. 
One of the first workers who got killed by the mimic was literally put on a clothes hanger and hung in a closet, which is very similar to what happened to the workers in the bunker. One of the first costumes the mimic puts on before going on a killing spree was also a jester costume, which is what Baby was designed to look like. But in the story The Mimic, even though the workers were killed, it seems that Fazbear Entertainment was still able to acquire the mimic, since we learn in the epilogues that they made a mimic version 2 based on the first mimic. So if Fazbear Entertainment also got that chip in the game, what happened to it? Well, to figure that out, we'll have to look at Help Wanted. In the tapes we collect in Help Wanted, we learn that Fazbear Entertainment dropped off a bunch of scraps and circuit boards to scan into the game to speed up development. They sent us that stuff in the first place with no explanation, told us to scan it. It was just junk, circuit boards and things like that. I believe that one of the things they scanned into that game was that chip. If you haven't noticed yet, the okay. chip also has two lights on it that shine one specific green. color, green. The same color that Glitch Trap is in Help Wanted and that is closely related to Charlie. So they scan the Charlie virus into the VR game and she shows up as a rabbit? At this point, I felt like I was onto something, but I immediately hit a wall. Why would the Charlie virus take the form of a rabbit that tilts its head and waves? Yes, the rabbit is green, which would make sense, but why a rabbit? Well, if the mimic really is our baby slash Charlie bot parallel, what does the mimic virus present itself as in the books? A white tiger. The same white tiger that it used to carry around in plushy form. But did Charlie ever carry around a plushie? Not in the games, but she did in the books. Its name was Theodore, and it was a rabbit that could quote, wave his hand, tilt his head, and play a recording of Henry saying, I love you, Charlie. Ah, uh, dude, this is, ah, uh, this is so tough. Cause right here, he made a connection again, but it, again, we're using a parallel book. But you can't deny the connection. You can't deny the connection. Once again, Charlie carried around a rabbit that could tilt its head and wave, which is exactly what we see Glitchtrap doing in Help Wanted. Something a ton of people in the community have pointed out about Glitchtrap is that he literally has tears streaming down his face and spit on his lip. This connects directly to what happened in The Mimic, with Edwin crying and spitting on The Mimic as he beat it up after his son's death. So do I think that this is the exact bunny that Charlie carried around in the game's timeline? I don't think so. But I will say say that I don't think it's a coincidence that at the end of Help Wanted, what Glitchtrap turns into is a little green rabbit plushie. And I also don't think it's a coincidence that in order to hear the secret audio of Vanessa talking to Glitchtrap, you need to be wearing the Vanny mask and holding that plushie in your hand. Just like how the what? Mimic likes wearing costumes and holding the white tiger plush. But I still think some form of Afton is in play here, since we hear Glitchtrap say, I always come back, let me out in Princess Quest. And I actually stand by what I been saying in my past theories. I still believe that the Mimic Virus was scanned into that game and got the spark notes of Afton's greatest hits through the minigames. The Mimic Virus then did what it does best and started mimicking him. But with the information we know now, I think that Mimic Virus was also a Charlie virus that came from Baby, represented by the color green we see on that chip. So Glitchtrap is essentially evil Charlie and Afton merged together, which is why we see a green bunny that tilts its head and waves, but it's more in the style of Afton with purple eyes and a purple vest. So if Afton is purple and the Charlie virus is green, it's easy to see what dominoes start to fall. Glitchtrap is purple and green. The door we unlock at the end of Princess Quest has purple and green on it. The logos on Security Breach TV are purple, purple and, green. and green. And the rabbit at the end of the Ruin trailer is purple, purple and green, green with tears streaming from its eyes, just like Glitchtrap. In Help Wanted, Tape Girl warns you not to collect all of the tapes because that'll spawn Glitchtrap. But in the final tape, she changes her tune. Yes, yes. And so, okay. I think I know where he's going with this because it's like it was telling it, hey, don't don't put those tapes together because it'll release glitch trap. Actually, put these tapes together because this is how we can actually stop glitch trap forever. Is that what you were just saying? Telling us that collecting all of the tapes is what we need to do to destroy glitch trap. There is a way to kill it. You have to let it begin the process of leaving through you. But this isn't Tape Girl talking. It's the Charlie slash Mimic virus okay. mimicking her voice. Mimicking okay. voices is something we see Baby do to Michael in Sister Location. We need you so that we can leave. We need you so that we can leave. This is also something we hear the Mimic do in the epilogues of the Tales books. Quote from the epilogues. Help. 
The voice on the radio came through loud and clear. Help me, I'm trapped in the old pizzeria, the voice said. Kelly looked up at Lucia. It's the Mimic. It's so it looks like mimic. this Charlie slash Mimic virus is now running throughout the entire pizza plex. Like I said before, Everything's was connected to the virus through the environmental story through these And there's one part of the pizza plex filled with environmental storytelling that hasn't wires. made sense until now. The endo daycare. Why would the endos need a daycare? Well, it's because they're literally being run by a virus that was meant to mimic a child. And like I said back in November, you can find the Nightmare Own plushie in this daycare in front of a deactivated endoskeleton. This this endo only activates once you grab that plush. Like I said back in November, this to me indicates that a darker version of the puppet has been activated. So now the big question is, what does this virus want? Well, just like it says in Princess Quest, it wants out. It wants to enter the physical world, but Glitchtrap needs someone it can control to be able to do that. That's where Vanessa comes in. But Vanessa can't do say. this alone. So she puts the virus into the BB World arcade machine that none other than Gregory ends up playing. After Gregory also gets possessed by Glitchtrap, she moves the BB World machine into the secret daycare room. But Vanessa still has work to do. You can actually see her plan through Vanny's spray paint in the endo daycare. She needs an endoskeleton to put him into. And who better than the animatronic animal he's trying to mimic? Vanessa uses Bonnie's endo and puts the Afton virus inside of it, successfully getting Glitchtrap out of the game and into the physical world. This is now what we know as Burn Trap. But like I said before, this virus is not just Afton, it's Charlie too and she wants the same thing. And who better a candidate than the thing that she was built to mimic? A little brunette girl with pigtails. I think it's obvious that Ruin takes place way after Security Breach, and the likelihood that Gregory is still alive and trapped under the pizza plex after all that time is very low. That's why I think- Ru Unless if Gregory is a robot. Ruin is a trap. I'm trapped here at the pizza plex or what's left of it. I think the Charlie slash Mimic virus is pretending to be Gregory so that it can lure Cassie and use her body to enter the real world. Do your own research, come to your own conclusions, but in my opinion, I think Baby was once a robotic version of Charlie Emily containing a program meant to mimic her. The bot was then beaten up by Henry after the death of his real daughter at the hands of William Afton. After Baby was left behind by Henry, she was stolen by William and claimed as his own. This same animatronic went on to kill William's daughter, Elizabeth. After this happened, Baby was now a Charlie robot possessed by Elizabeth. Baby was then once again abandoned in the sister location bunker, until Michael came along at the request of his father to save her and put her back together. Unbeknownst to Henry, the Charlie virus was able to escape Baby by tricking Michael into taking the chip containing it out of the robot. I want you to save what is good so the rest can be destroyed and never recovered. Henry then thinks he burned everything in FNAF 6, but the Except Mimic the slash virus. Charlie virus he created lived on when it was scanned into Fazbear Entertainment's new VR game. A lot of this theory connects to what we see in the Silver Eyes trilogy. And I think it's important to say that so much of what we know today came from those books. All of these things were first introduced in those books and then put into the games by Scott. I don't think the games are telling the exact same story though. I think the books are a separate continuity like Scott Scott said a while ago, but I think he's definitely taking ideas from them. But the only people who know all of the answers are Scott and Steel Wool Studios. And until they feel like sharing those answers, I hope you enjoyed me sharing my ideas oh, for the loved story it. they're trying to tell. What? Back in September of- I'm uh, going crazy! <laughs> Dude, that just- That is just like the theme of FNAF lore that you just have to accept, fam. I don't... Ah, uh, okay. So, here's the thing again. Almost all of this, all of this theory again is based off of a book that's parallel at best to game lore. But I will say... God, it makes sense, fam. It makes sense. So, William... Didn't. And again, we don't have any concrete facts to prove against this, right? There's nothing that we know is 100% lore that proves against this. So, William did not make baby. It was stolen, which was actually one of the Charlie bots that Henry beat after his kid died.
which then, you know, got the bad and evil, uh, you know, how to treat people idea. Killed those researchers. William went in there, stole it, turned it into a baby, not knowing it had the Charlie virus. Then it killed Elizabeth. Elizabeth inhabited it. So now we have another thing that's good and bad. And then it makes sense, dude. It makes sense that it, cause again, it did it. It was like, you know, you know, don't put all the tapes together. Do put all the tapes together. And then I love the fact that he brought up that it, it, it talked as Elizabeth in a third person. She, she, she. And then she was like, I, I can pretend I'm pretending. To, to manipulate when we were Michael to get the the virus out to take it, but we were saving what was good. Cap, we were saving what was bad, and then it gets scared. Okay, so let me know. I actually like this, dude. I like this. I think Fun Naf does such a great job at selling. I mean, Matt Bat does too, but I like this. I think it makes sense. The only thing I don't like, man, is just it. We're using parallel, when you wanna parallel lore, which is so tough because you can you can make a connection. I can make a connection to my farts. Well, you know my farts are kind of. <laughs> I think, I think evil evil baby is actually from my farts. And just uh, stay tuned for my next theory and I'll connect it, you know, but I hope you guys enjoyed this. I had a blast reacting to this. Make sure you show fun now. Some love by subscribing to the channel. And if you enjoy my reaction, smash that subscribe button because it greatly helps. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And remember, if you sleep and make beats and as usual, we kind of want to know that. That's all I got. Boop. I'm out. Gonna be love. Go to Souls Gang. Peace out, Souls Gang.